Hi everyone and welcome back to Simply Neutral. If you're new to my channel, my name is Char and I'm a mindfulness artist and I make videos about art, mindfulness, meditation, simple living, and self-development. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to be a minimalist as an artist. When I started my minimalist journey about seven years ago, the one thing that I was most concerned about was how can I be an artist and live a simple and clutter-free life? Before I get into the tips, I wanna share a little bit about my journey so far. Throughout college, I've accumulated so many art supplies and I feel like after I had graduated college, I had at least 80% of my art supplies that I was not using. They were just collecting dust in my studio closet. Back then, minimalism wasn't super popular, but it was becoming more popular I would say around 2014 when I began my journey, um, there wasn't much about it. It was starting to get more popular on YouTube. So I was binge watching so many YouTubers and learning a lot about their journey, some of their tips and tricks on how to live a more simple lifestyle. So I implemented a lot of their tips into my own life. And the one thing that I noticed was I didn't see any artists who were also minimalist. So I really had no one to actually get advice from. When I started purging out my stuff, I had no problem letting go of my clothes. I would say got rid of at least 20 bags of clothing throughout those seven years. And I got rid of a lot of knickknacks and furniture that I didn't need. But when it came to my art supplies, that was the last thing I tackled because I felt a little overwhelmed. There's this, I guess you can say stereotype that when you think of an artist, you think of a messy studio filled with art supplies and paints and canvas and all that. So I felt this attachment to my art supplies. I felt that if I had let them all go, I wouldn't be the artist that I really wanted to be and an artist that people would admire and love. So it took me a while to really get rid of my art supplies. I ended up giving away most of the art supplies to friends, family, and I also gave a whole box of art supplies to uh, my sister's work. She used to work at a design institute years ago and i told her you know let's give this all to students because i honestly have not been using it fast forward to now 2021 i definitely feel like i'm at a really good place and i do feel like i found my balance of being a minimalist and an artist so here are my tips on how i found that balance through my minimalism journey so one question that I have asked myself was, what mediums do I often use? So you guys know that uh, with Urban Sketch, I mainly used watercolor. So I only used watercolor, gouache, and that's basically it. I mean, I do have some colored pencils. So after I had made a list of all the art mediums that I use consistently, then I knew what I didn't need. So once I got to the point where I looked at my art supplies and I knew that I was actually gonna use all of them, that's when I vowed to myself that I wouldn't buy any more art supplies until I had finished what I already had. So that's the first tip. Use all the art supplies that you currently have before buying new ones. Resist the urge to go to the art store and buy new art supplies just because. That just made me think about what they call this shiny object syndrome. You know, always wanting to go after the latest trends or getting that new item. So it's kind of the same thing with art supplies. For example, if you see an artist that you adore and you love their work and you ask them what art supplies they're using, you just want to go out and buy what they're using. I definitely felt that in the past, especially when I was following an artist on Instagram or on YouTube. The first thing that came to mind was, what art supplies are they using? I would always check to see if they had like an art supplies tour or a photo of all their art supplies. And I would instantly go on Google and search to see if the paints got good reviews. And if it did, I would instantly buy it. So it's that feeling of, 
you know, if that person has it and they're creating beautiful art, I want that too. So yeah, but nowadays I honestly have found that it really doesn't matter what art supplies I have. Um, it's all about your technique and your own style. So yeah, resist the urge to go out and buy something just because someone else has it. Tip number two is quality over quantity. Over the past seven years, I've realized that it's not about how many art supplies I have. It's all about the quality. A couple of years after starting my YouTube channel, I had so many art brands reaching out to me, just wanting to send me all their art supplies to review on my channel. And at the time I was like, yeah, send it to me. I really want to try a new watercolor set. Um, and I found that I was starting to accumulate so much more and I realized that they weren't good quality and they just weren't working for me. So when I finally decided to invest in a really good watercolor set, it was a Schmincke watercolor set. I still have it and I haven't hit pan and it was the best investment I ever made for myself as an artist. Let me see if I can find it here. The set that I bought is the 24 half pan. Where is it at? <laughs> I just moved my art supplies, so. Oh, here I go. So the original palette it came with was much longer, but I managed to find a smaller one on Amazon and Oh my gosh, I can't open it. So here it is. You guys have seen it many times on my channel, but this is a 24 half pan uh, Schmincke watercolor set. And I barely hit pan and it's been six years, seven, six years. Yeah, six years. And it's, it's still there. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I highly recommend that you, if you're really serious about being an artist, to really invest in quality supplies. Even though up front I had spent way more than I had wanted to, it was all worth it because six years later, I still have so much left. The only one I've used Prior to this was the Windsor & Newton Comment Watercolor set that I used for Urban Sketch. Um, but I love this brand so much and the quality of the watercolor is amazing, top notch. And I remember in the past, I've had many people recommend different art brands to try out, but if I like something, I'm usually like a creature of habit. I go for what I think is best for me. So yeah, if it works best for me, then I probably won't try anything else. <laughs> Same thing goes with my gouache paints. I probably bought my first set of gouache paints about three or four years ago, and I haven't bought any new tubes since. I currently use the Windsor & Newton designer's gouache. So yeah, if you do have the money, I highly suggest that you invest in your art supplies because they will last you for years. But if it's not within your budget at the moment, just use what you currently have. Now, my third and last tip is to try digital art. Now, you guys know that just last year, I started getting into digital illustrations. You know, I have my iPad and I have been drawing on Procreate for the past, I guess, eight months now. At first, I was overwhelmed. I didn't know how to draw on Procreate. I was just so used to painting with watercolor and gouache. So digital art was just such a new realm for me. And I think it was around late summer when I finally found something that worked so well for me. I went on Etsy and I found a watercolor kit for Procreate and it has changed the game for me. So I will leave a link to the watercolor kit that I currently use. Seriously, it looks like a real watercolor painting, but it's digital art. So I was just like, mind blown. I was like, now I can create watercolor illustrations, but 
have it be digital. I will eventually make a video about my views on traditional and digital art. But the one thing that I love about digital art is that you don't have to go buy new art supplies because it's all in just one device. Like yes, up front, you know, if you don't ha already have an iPad or a tablet, it's gonna be costly. In the long run, you do save money because you can create so much on your tablet or your iPad and you're producing less waste, which is so good for the environment. So for me as an artist, I wanted to find a balance between traditional and digital art. And I definitely think I found that balance because I personally love both. With digital art, there's so many ways to work around it. So many tools that you can use that you can't use for traditional art. Digital art is amazing. And as a minimalist, I think that's such a great way to create art because it doesn't take up too much space. Um, it's all on one device and you can create so much within one device and still be creative and have less waste. So that's a great investment for me. And over the past few years, I've concluded that living a minimalist lifestyle is all about finding what works best for you. Because minimalism in general is not just all about wearing all black or having a condensed wardrobe or just living out of a backpack. If that's what you find is the lifestyle for you, then go for it. But there's really no right way to go about it. You know, so many people have misconceptions of a minimalist lifestyle. You know, they think that you have to have a certain amount of items in your house, but really it's just all about keeping what brings value to your life. So if you feel that having all these art supplies brings you joy, then keep it. But keep it because you actually use it and keep it because it makes you happy and you're creating art that you love. Um, personally for me, I, I'm a very organized person, so I don't like to have too much clutter in my space. I like to have my space clean. So a lot of times I keep all my art supplies in my drawers. So if you were to walk into my office, you wouldn't think that I was an artist because a lot of my art supplies are stored in drawers, bins. So yeah, I'm a very organized artist, but I do have, I still have a lot of art supplies, but I have the perfect amount for me, for what I create. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope that this video was helpful and that you learned a little bit about minimalism and being an artist. Um, if you like this video, definitely give this video a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed yet, definitely subscribe down below and be sure to click on the notification bell so that you are up to date with all my future videos. As always, live simply. I'm sending you all so much love. Take care. Bye.